If we ask our modern day science what constitutes our body, it might take you to the basic building blocks called cells. Cells can unite together to form tissues for various organs on one side and can be dissected into subcellular materials going down to subatomic levels on the other side. Study of biology, the science of body, is useful to understand functional systems of our body like digestion and blood circulation. This helps us to study nature of diseases and ailments. However, these issues feature in our other videos. Then what do we mean by philosophy of body? Our ancient texts give us a concept of Panch Mahabhut, which means the five great elements. Accordingly, everything in this universe is composed of these five elements. These elements are known as water, air, fire, earth and space. This can probably provide a holistic description of what constitutes our body and also an understanding of its relationship with the cosmic phenomena. Water is present in our body to an extent of about 60% by weight and is considered even by modern science as a prerequisite for life to exist on a planet. All liquids including blood, sweat, tears and intracellular fluids represent water in the body. Air is represented by the contraction and expansion of lungs, which inhale the most essential oxygen for our blood. Fire denotes energy which is responsible for all activity of body organs, such as our heart, lungs and intestines and also movement of the body as a whole. Earth is represented by all solid elements such as muscles, bones, hair and so on. And finally, all subtle and invisible elements like thoughts, emotions, perceptions of the mind are essentially represented by space. But how does it help to know this philosophy? Well, there is a definite proportion of each of these elements in various life forms including our body. Whenever there is an imbalance of Panch Mahabhut in our body, it results in disease and ailments. Hence, knowledge of this philosophy of body can prevent disease and promote well-being. We may agree here that prevention is certainly better than cure.